On rebalancing, finally, I'm not interested in ideological arguments about intervention versus laissez-faire. I simply want an industrial strategy that works. I think we need government to get behind those high-growth, high-value sectors which will be the backbone of the new economy. Now, everyone agrees that in the past, our economy became too lopsided, too dependent on debt, on consumption, on financial services. We need to put that right. And frankly, we're not just sitting back hoping that business will come to Britain. We are out there winning it. Take one example, offshore wind energy. We are investing in our ports. We're reforming our electricity market. I am personally on the telephone to the heads of Siemens, Gamesa, and other major turbine manufacturers to get them to come invest in Britain. We're using enterprise zones to help make that happen. In London, we're working with some of the most advanced firms anywhere to make Tech City a reality. It's gone from 30 businesses to 600 businesses in just a couple of years. I believe it can become the digital capital of Europe. In the last few weeks, I've been to visit BP in the North Sea, a stunning new factory at McLaren, where, frankly, you could, it was so clean, you could probably carry out uh, medical operations as well as build cars. Today, I'm hosting Britain and Norway, signing a 10-year deal uh, to secure gas supplies and develop over a billion pounds worth of Norwegian gas fields. And I know, too, that government has got to change the way it does business. We, in government, have got to become quicker and easier to sell to, so that small and medium-sized firms don't get swamped by the cost of bidding. So today we're announcing plans to direct the huge purchasing power of government to the task of strengthening the UK economy. 99% of companies are SMEs. At the moment, they win just 6% of procurement spending. And more than that, I want us to get right this issue that I think other European countries have got right, and frankly, we haven't, and that is supporting and strengthening UK-based industrial capability in key sectors where we lack capacity. In the rail industry, instance, for as the, the recent example of Bombardier has shown. That means, very simply, investing in long-term relations with our suppliers so they win orders. This is just what the private sector does. We need to do it in government too. That is what other European governments do. I'm determined we will as well. Now, finally, you've asked us to help drive exports, to encourage British-based businesses to find the confidence and reach out to the world. That's exactly what we're doing. Now, some people criticise me for using the power of government and diplomacy to make the case for British business, for loading up people onto aeroplanes and taking them all over the world. Frankly, I'm proud to do that. I think it is part of my job. If we're going to have an export-led recovery, you need the government to be right behind you. That's why I've taken delegations to China, to Russia, to India, and, of course, to Turkey. And I'm delighted that you've got uh, the Turkish president coming to address you uh, this afternoon. Now, in the last year, we've seen exports to India up 20%, exports to China up 36%. I'm pleased to say with the Turks, that's a 40% increase we've had since 2009. So that is the challenge for all of us. I will lead the task of building the new economy. The government will deal with its debts and drive through the reform that we need. I believe, though, we will only come through this if we come through it together. And that means business playing a huge part, too. With all our effort, I know this country will overcome the great challenges of today. We've got incredible strengths in this country. And if we hold firm, if we make the right choices, I have no doubt that Britain can be a stronger and a more prosperous nation. Thank you very much for listening.